So Games Workshop have reissued a couple of new marine data sheets today. Now we can see the new options for the Gravis Captain and Primaris Ancient, and an interesting new rule called Gravis Captain Fighting Styles. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, where today we're doing a quick review of a new couple of Games Workshop data sheets, two new ones for the re-sculpts of Space Marine characters that they're releasing this week, the new Gravis Captain and the Primaris Ancient. They've already showed these off to us before a few weeks back. They're characters that come from the Dark Imperium box set, but they were never available on their own, so it is kind of handy to have them as an option as they do appear in the Space Marine Codex. From the prices that they've released this week, it appears that they'll both be £23.50, $35 or €30, Euros, kind of in line what I might have expected for new character sculpts. Obviously nowhere near as good a value though if you did manage to get your hands on a Dark Imperium box. Both of the kits come with a fair amount of options, I believe they both have head swaps. The Primaris Ancient has two different banners that you can equip him with, but perhaps one of the more interesting things is they actually have a war gear update as well. They're breaking away from the Primaris monopose trend, and now the Ancient is able to take a power sword instead of his bolt rifle, and the Gravis Captain can take a chainsword, power fist, or power sword. As the data sheets in the codex don't allow for any of those options, it did kind of mean that Games Workshop would have to update the rules in some form, even if it was just an errata. They are going to be printing the data sheets in this new Warzone Nackman box that comes out this weekend, but I think it's pretty helpful that they've also given us a free data sheet download for them if anyone did want to use these new weapons. I can't imagine many people seriously being a fan of picking up that entire book literally for one or two data sheets. Some of the war gear changes are kind of expected, but interestingly the Gravis Captain does appear to have a few extra changes, including a points cost increase a special rule and an upgrade to his gun. I thought we'd just take a look at the new updated rules and talk about how they might fit in in the rest of the Space Marine army, as it does unlock a few interesting options for these guys. First up, we'll start with the Gravis Captain, who does appear to have gone up from 115 points to 120. Interestingly, with the way that his special rules are worded, it doesn't matter which weapon he's armed with in his offhand, he still costs 120 points. Previously, Gravis Captains were 115 points, Despite being a model that quite a lot of people have in their collections, not a lot of people really seem to take them competitively. I think he's generally overshadowed by captains with bikes or jump packs, which move fast and get where they need to be. Or if you're looking for a foot captain, then the Indomitus style one with the Storm Shield I think has most people's votes. He gets a 2 plus save and a decent power weapon, and he costs a few points less. For that reason, I do kind of feel that they probably could have just left his points cost as it was, but they have chosen to rise it a little bit though I think it's perhaps a little bit questionable as to whether or not it's really increased 5 points worth of value. One interesting little change is that the Bolt Storm Gauntlet appears to be out to 18 inch range now. It wasn't talked about in the Warhammer Community Preview article, so I'm not sure even if this is an intentional change or just a misprint on their digital data sheet. In any case, at least at time of recording, it is the current change now. A little boost to his ranged pistol damage, though still 3 bolt shots at strength 4 AP-1 aren't exactly going to change the world. It's kind of inconsequential compared with whether or not he makes combat. The more interesting change of course is being able to take the chainsword, power fist or power sword in that right hand. Now they've taken really quite an interesting approach to balance the 3 weapons, despite them obviously being different in power, because he has a special rule called Gravis Fighting Styles. If he's armed with an Astartes chainsword, he gets to make an additional 2 attacks with that weapon. And as the Astartes Chainsword gives him an extra attack as well, that means he'll get 3 bonus attacks at strength 4 AP-1. Really not too bad when you're already striking with 6 Power Fist attacks with Shock Assault, as he gets those on the Bolt Storm Gauntlet. Next, if you choose to equip him with a Power Sword, then he gets an additional 2 attacks with that weapon. So it'll be 6 Power Fist attacks, accompanied by 2 Power Sword attacks at strength 5 AP-3 and damage 1. Now I have noticed that it previously used to be classed as a Mastercrafted Power Sword, strength 5 and damage 2. So technically the weapon itself has been nerfed, but in terms of his actual combat prowess and how good he is at fighting, this is a flat buff. It was kind of weird before the way that he was armed with a power fist and a mastercrafted power sword, as against most targets that were very very similar in damage output, though to be honest the mastercrafted power sword was eclipsed in almost every single way by that bolt storm gauntlet. The power sword could hit on twos, but the bolt storm gauntlet makes up for that by wounding better against literally anything unless you're playing certain chapters like Blood Angels. Realistically, it meant that him having a damage 2 power sword was kind of redundant, so even if it's changed to a regular profile and he now gets extra free attacks with it, that is pretty much a flat upgrade. This would be 6 power fist attacks and then 2 at strength 5 AP-3 damage 1. Finally, if he's trying to look like a mini Kalgar, he can take an additional power fist, and if he does that, he gets 1 extra attack with that. 
The Gravis fighting style's ability doesn't apply to any relics which replace these weapons, unfortunately. Otherwise, that would make him just about the best character choice to take any relics on. Basically, the choice that you have to make with this guy is whether you want a bonus 3 chainsaw attacks at strength 4, AP-1, 2 power sword attacks at strength 5, AP-3, or a single power fist attack at strength 8, AP-3, damage 2, and minus 1 to hit. Honestly, I feel that these are really quite well balanced. The chainsaw genuinely will be the best for fighting hordes like, say, guardsmen. The power sword will be better against any one wound medium infantry. And the power fist will be the best against vehicles, provided they don't have minus one damage. I think out of the three, my favourite is probably still the power sword. I feel that attacks have got enough strength and AP to make them meaningful. And it's got a good chance of doing a little bit extra, no matter what target you're fighting. There's really not much in it though, and I could happily take any of the three. With his points increased though, I think it's kind of equivocal whether or not he's improved. It kind of seems in proportion for that extra attacks rule and the little bit of extra range on his pistol. I'm still not sure that he's really going to be the go-to Space Marine Captain. I guess he's not a terrible choice though if you just want a whole load of raw might, but I think that extra price tag is still not going to compare amazingly with the Indomitus Captain, or say a Firstborn Captain with a Thunder Hammer and a Mobility option. These extra bits of kit do unlock some different Relic choices he could take. He could use the Teeth of Terror, Relic Power Fists from the Crimson Fists or Imperial Fists, Certainly not bad at all on a 6 attack model once you've factored in Shock Assault, but because you have to trade up those Gravis fighting styles, I'm just really not sure that it's going to be a good idea. If you're already paying for a model who's got a quite decent combat weapon already in that Bolt Storm Gauntlet, and by losing those fighting styles, you're losing another bonus attack as well. It does mean that he's perhaps one of the worst models to put a Relic weapon on, so I don't think that we're going to see these guys spamming the Teeth of Terror, even if it is one of the first ways to get it on a Primaris model. Finally, here's the new datasheet for the Primaris Ancient. He remains at 80 points, and I must admit the changes aren't really quite as drastic for this guy. The only option is to give him a power sword for 5 points. It replaces a bolt rifle, and it could kind of happily go either way with that, either just keep him cheap and doing his job and providing a bit of ranged fire, or giving him a power sword does turn him into a bit of a mini combat threat, another character that you can pile forward into the fray when the enemy does get too close. He will be getting 5 attacks with it, but he's not really got the profile of a frontline character really. I guess it does make certain Relic Power Sword options a bit more interesting for him. He could perhaps take the Burning Blade if he wanted to. Generally, it's perhaps not my favourite Relic weapon, but I think it has a special place on this guy, just because he can't take any of the other weapons, such as Power Fists. With that, he'd be striking at Strength 7, AP-5 and Damage 2. So if he did want an Ancient that was actually a genuine melee threat, that could be a choice. Given the current rules for Ancients, though, they really don't see too much play in competitive lists, not outside of very specific Relic banners. Shooting castle space marines with a whole bunch of infantry just perhaps aren't quite what they were in 8th. So anyway, let me know what you think of the new rules and the new models down in the comments below. I do quite like the way that they put a little bit more thought into the Gravis Captain than they really needed to. His rules do seem quite fun, even if they're probably still not top tier for space marine captains. Still looks like a fun model to use in game though. If you've enjoyed the video, feel free to subscribe to All Specs Tactics, where I will certainly keep the regular videos coming, with new ones out just about every day. Finally, if you have been enjoying all the content on the channel, I would just like to mention the channel's Patreon page, which is down in the video description. It is what supports me to keep on making these videos, and it's quite a big motivation to keep on making them, even when my vocal cords are trying to give up on me. I do try and give a fair few benefits for patrons, including seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things come next, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways, with a chance to win some big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you, or you'd just like to help support, the link is down in the video description. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.